there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another video here on Pastiche of Skin. We're doing something a little bit different than we normally do here on Pastiche of Skin. We're going to be looking at something that's a little bit more of like an art exhibit slash game that um, I've been asked to take a look at. Uh, this is a sponsored video, of course. I uh, need to be clear and tell people what the crack is with us because it is actually made for a website called Mess Life or Mess Cafe, which is like a collaborative space designed by uh, Lee Tussman. Who is somebody that I actually was in touch with a fair time ago? Uh, who was actually, if you, it was the person behind the live stream that I did of the uh, uh, of GTA for broadcast on to um, a, a cinema screen that was actually made for a LA exhibit, and it was it was it was, a, it was an interesting idea, um, something that I was actually really interested in doing, and um, he essentially made it happen so that I could actually be able to live stream to a location and uh well essentially uh, display my, my, what i do as a streamer while also kind of doing an active walking or living experience within a virtual world which kind of coincided with what he was trying to display and this is kind of a continuation of what he was trying to do what kind of work he was doing where there is a wide open uh virtual space that he's created called mess life but you know what i'm going to do first i'm going to actually bring this up here and these are the basic controls that he's actually set up for it. This is publicly accessible. You can go and check it out yourself on mess.cafe forward slash v7, which is the current version of it. But if you go to www.mess.life, you'll be kind of like, you'll be able to see where the display of all this is actually going up. So, of course, this is a description of what it is. Mess Life is a virtual DIY art space in the tradition of warehouse art spaces and alternative venues. Mess Life is a free, as in radical, software project built by many people for purposes of online and IRL hanging, collabing, and making. And it, it really does feel like a collab space. It's a, the functionality in it is fairly simple, but the whole concept is to dis, dis, to put in a world that it kind of relates in the same way, like Second Life or IMVU or other virtual chat systems and allow people to walk through a space and experience um, other people's art, other people's designs, other people's ideas, and be able to work together to work, do things together in a collaborative manner. So it, it's kind of interesting to actually just be able to take part in this, even though it's obviously something that's in really early design. Now, of course, there's a full list here of um, people that are involved in it. Um, if you want to check out and get the full details and the credits from it, you can, of course, go to mess.life and check it out for yourself. But uh, I'm going to go and wander around and take a look to see what's set up in here. I don't know if I should be, if I'm allowed to actually go in and do much changing in here, because what I do know is that uh, Lee is actually putting up uh, objects in display for the purposes of um, an art show so I'm kind of like seeing what he has already dropped in in place and maybe we might put something in and then take it away again afterwards just to show what the functionality of the space actually is. Now, it can, this is the kind of place that could be easily vandalized, but I mean, I think the whole point of respect is to actually, you know, put things in that are actually contextually interesting. So uh, just looking here at some of these cubes he's put up. Now, basically each one of these are considered walls in this space. Um, of course, a couple of shopping baskets. Very nicely modeled. Each of these walls can be controlled essentially with. Um, I'm just going to go up here and take a quicker, closer look at one and show you the controls that are available. So you can essentially grab the wall, get close enough. Yeah, we're close enough this time. Get close. <laughs> you grab the wall, it actually allows you to change the width, height, depth of the wall, and that actually changes uh, the st the details of where it is and its positioning and where it actually like lays in this world. Of course, you can see that they. Repeated textures are actually like <laughs> floated around each other on different sides in different directions. I think that might be just the way it um, textures onto square objects. Oh, cool. And fuck the police. <laughs> Hello, fuck the police. Uh, over here is what appears to be like kind of like a skate park. Oh, yeah, obviously you get a big overview of the whole space. Now, each of those textures are on the floor are all from like an online archive that's been put into the actual software which you can add to as you go into this and you essentially just click here and add in different textures you want i don't know if there's anything that i put in here still there from earlier today no these are actually all from lee's own personal library i imagine and was cleared up whatever oh no wait there is actually stuff belonging to me in here <laughs> there's a few of these that actually i posted in earlier on that was actually testing out how the space should look um now let's actually go in and put something down uh well, first, the first thing you can do is actually change yourself. Obviously, I can't see myself, which is a problem. <laughs> It'd be nice to actually have a third-person view to be able to go in and take a look at yourself. I'm just going to make myself look like a bizarre Santa Claus. So, um, 
let's take a look around. I imagine Lee's probably still in this space, kind of like wandering around. So these little pills are what each person logged in would be. Uh, since you here viewing the gallery as it is, I think one of these must be Lee, or at least two of these, while he's very busily putting this space together. Right. Obviously, you can hear the music playing through these boom boxes here in the corner. <laughs> um, yeah, the the tune here is it's my, it's quite disturbing. It's like one of the things where I find it unnerving to listen to for long periods of time. So I'm actually playing this with my audio turned down for the moment because I've been listening to it for a while now. This is the trash heap for anything that actually was placed down or needs to be moved away quickly. You can actually just throw it into the trash. One of the viable options you can do in here. Um, let's see. I'm going to go inside the actual like warehouse space and probably put something in on in there rather than starting to mess up his floor. I actually really like the way these kind of stack as well. Objects that are placed down in the world don't have physics applied to them until they are hit by other objects in the world. So a number of these pictures or walls were put up the same as you would have with like something like this where it just stands on its own. And then obviously they've been... Oh! Oh crap! Oh crap! Um, hmm. Hmm. I think I may have hit that. All right. Uh... Damn. Right. Uh, I'm not going to admit that I made that mistake and I'm going to go very quietly in here. <laughs> and that's, that's got, that is frustrating because I was trying to actually move objects earlier on and I can place them down in a place or in a single spot without them falling over. That is probably going to annoy him. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, let's take a look in to see what other things I've got here and I keep throw up a poster for uh, just to show exactly how simple it is to actually place things into this world. That's a nice one there. I actually like the Black Cat poster. Grab that wall from a vintage comic. A bit old school. And let's take a look around. So obviously you grab the object and you place it wherever you want it to be. Um, I'm going to just go here. I'm going to try to get as close to the wall as I can. And then I can place it against the wall. And I'm going to increase its height a wee bit. And then I can move it up here. And as you can see, essentially, whenever I drop it, uh, gravity will apply to the object. The physics will apply to the object. And it'll lie here. There you go. See? Uh-oh. Go back. Go against the wall. Uh, uh... <laughs> there we go. So there's two comics stacked in front of each other. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with that, so I actually had to very quickly react and grab another version of it and place it behind it. So that one is standing up comfortably there. <laughs> All right. So yeah, you can actually place objects into the world. Uh, essentially, I can imagine it being really cool as a virtual gallery space that you can um, experience through uh, live events where it actually be broadcast on the screens. People can give a virtual tour throughout it. Or, uh, of course, through screenshots. So, say, for example, uh, look at this. I actually like the way these are laid out. I can prop out the little world in the back. And look at these up here. And you can actually hit a screenshot button. Screenshot button allowing you to actually take a screenshot that will be uploaded to the actual space for people to see. Otherwise, uh, whenever they're actually like uh, in the gallery. So, you can actually take, take screenshots and then the, what actually you've taken a screenshot of will appear on screens in the gallery as well. So, uh, there's Black Cat Comics. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm sure he'd actually like, come in and delete that after we well, but it was really, really simple to actually place those objects in. The um, the space, actually, I, I like the idea of this more than the current execution. I mean, obviously, there's uh, basic functionality applied to this. I like she uh, the round circle. The multiple layers and textures on the floor, the almost kind of like decoupage kind of thing that's going on with it. I absolutely, I like it, 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 it hurts my eyes, it hurts, the, the constant movement that's applied to it, uh, although as interesting as it is, just um, the way they intersect and layer over top of each other, in fact some of them don't actually like the, lay over each other correctly and whenever you're standing on the floor you can actually see your feet disappearing or object you've placed down disappearing, it gives a perception of movement even though there isn't any there, same way it does with uh, this one, I imagine it's a uh, Instead of it actually being a static floor, this is meant to be like flowing water and there's a texture over the water. So, yeah, it's uh, mildly frustrating to say the least. But, uh, yeah, I like it. It's a, it's an open new horizon for actually doing creative stuff. This is pretty fun. And I hope to actually see more of it done with Lee's work. I'll be probably popping back into this to actually play around to see what other things can be done with it. Uh, maybe some more elaborate and uh, 
there's more elaborate shaped objects and i would love to know when the actual like event is on and whenever there'd be more people here because the i imagine this comes alive a bit more whenever there's multiple people creating at once because that's what it's designed for it's a collaborative space before we jump out of here i want to take a look over at let's make sure my controls are okay because <laughs> i'm kind of like um i'm i've never been a pc player more outside of using a control pad so i am unbelievably rusty on my wazid and directional controls uh so you can obviously tell by how jerky my mouse is but yeah this this space kind of gives me ideas just like whenever you look at places like second life uh or other virtual chat systems it kind of require a solid level of knowledge of uh meshes and how to actually model things together this could grow from what is just simply straight objects that just have depth and height and width actually just kind of display boxes and images on top to do something more. I would love to see more collaborative spaces like this kind of appear. So fair play to you, Lee. This is awesome um, for what it is. <laughs> it's the understandable kind of like the, it's such a, it's a public open space. And I obviously came in and wrecked <laughs> a little bit of the art that's in here. And that's the greatest problem of anybody who plays online. Like say for example, if you have one of those Minecraft servers where you're building an amazing object and you let other people in, Pretty much you're guaranteed that they're going to find some way to make TNT and blow up everything just for the fact that they wanted for their shits and giggles. Let's see if I can actually jump in here and change the views. Don't see if the other cameras are available. Oh, have I lost control of my mouse? Yes, I have. There we go. So we hit the sky cam. It's an overhead shot of the entire space, which I imagine uh, is intentional. Like she kind of show the uh, floors and the constantly changing and flowing pattern of it, which it could be really cool if you actually had... Uh, something that was a little bit more, oh, well, not a little bit more, kind of like uh, intentional in its shape because a lot of this is actually very hard to tell with a lot of these uh, sharp edges and intersecting points that seem to be constantly in flow, especially with the uh, camera seemingly kind of like rotating you whenever you're sitting here. Oh, it's actually, the, it's not rotating you, but I think the whole world itself is rotating, so it might need to calm itself down a little bit. Uh, trash cam if you want to go and take a look to see what's in the trash hello world and i see you and i see that face and of course back to our head cam which is us that's kind of cool enjoy this the um the space just feels like it's coming alive now especially with the fact that lee's putting stuff together for an actual intentional exhibit but i wouldn't mind knowing uh what he's what his intention is to actually continue on with it or if he wants to actually leave this open for people to kind of add to of their own accord. I imagine it's probably an open stem on GitHub or something that actually has made, that made this. Um, essentially, it just feels like a very open Unity yeah, workspace. Which, uh, I didn't even realize. I didn't even look up at the sky boxes around. That's a blaring sun. Without very much sky. So the reality of it is delightful. But the uh, the roughness of it. Feel it like it feel it definitely feels like a work in progress, which is awesome. Uh, which should, should always be like uh, any creative workspace is always a work in progress. You're forever reorganizing everything to make more sense out of what you're actually doing in it. Um, and my, my studio is an example of that unto itself. If <laughs> you just looked around it on any of the previous videos before now, well, it took me a year to get to the point where it's sitting looking like this now, and even then, you guys don't get to see half of that because of the green screen. But yeah, this is um, this is actually pretty enjoyable. It's cool. Is there actually a seesaw actually out there on the edge? I'm going to take a wee look. Ah, so I see where the edge of the world map is. I wonder, can I actually get out there? Or is there an invisible boundary? Because that looks like objects have been dropped out there. Behind a particular wall. I'm flying and floating. I'm assuming there actually is not an actual end of the world, unless this is actually the flat surface that everything goes on to. Which would be weird. But yeah, there's an object out here. Taking a look. Nice wee pattern on that. But what we're more concerned with is whether or not you can drop off the edge of the world. Can you? Nah, of course, invisible walls. That's what happens. <laughs> oh, wait. I can't even tell because of the way things are moving. <laughs> yes, I'm not moving back any further. There is invisible walls. Yeah, so that's actually give you uh, the, the playroom that you're actually in and then the invisible edge that you would actually travel out to. Just curious what else is on that floor. Crazy. Hmm. Right. Well, I am going to actually wander on from here. Let's bring up the details of actually of uh, mess life again. Just kind of check it out. 
Is there anything I missed out on to do? Grab them all, drop them all, trash pile on it, resurrect from the trash, which is pulling it from the trash, screenshot, and of course the wall, floor, self, and the library. Guys, this is um, Mess Life. Do you want to check it out for yourself on www.messlife? It's, um, it's free to play. It's free to use. It's essentially just a, it's a web Unity applet that just opens up and runs in your browser. It doesn't seem to actually have um, any major dependencies otherwise, so it'll run on most of everything. I was actually looking at this on much smaller screens whenever I first started playing around with it. And obviously, I've put it onto the larger screen, so you can see a lot more detail whenever we're playing in, playing in this look, locale. But um, yeah. Mess Life as a, like the idea of a creative collaborative space. There's so many of them that I go into in real life that are immediately welcoming. This obviously has a side, essentially it's an open space you can go into and work in, but you're always going to be communicating outside of it because unless you have an image for image macro for everything, there's nothing you can really say to people other than hello world. Um, obviously the whole point is to actually add and create and build and show off art. And I would love to see more virtual gallery spaces like this kind of crop up. What would be really interesting is to see replication of real life spaces and then virtual uh, exhibitions placed within them. Because this is obviously like a, just a simple square warehouse and an open space around the outside of it. If this was made to mirror a real locale and actually have uh, the ability to wander through it, which uh, with the advent of VR technology, we are going to get to the point where we're going to just wander around uh, VR museums and just check out digital art, which I know a lot of people would turn around and think would be a death of art in its own way, but digital and replication and ease of access are going to helpfully educate and keep everybody uh, artistically affluent <laughs> by having the access and be given freedom to absolutely everyone to see it. I um, don't know if that's actually everybody's opinion, but collaborative open working spaces are built around the idea of being open and welcoming to anyone. And I hope that's actually the feeling that this will kind of invoke in other people. So uh, DIY art spaces, if you, if you know of ones that you can think, if there's ones you can think of that you know of uh, around your areas and world, comment about them underneath because um, ones that I come to mind for me or because I live in uh, Northern Ireland, specifically Belfast, places like Farset Labs, always jump to mind, Studio 11. There's a lot of places that actually or keep themselves open. Black Box. The Black Box in Belfast is one of those amazing spaces, event spaces that you can actually go and see and actually have uh, always are under fear of being closed down because of lack of funding or lack of attendance. Don't just go to fictional places like this. Just use this knowledge and this kind of place to actually go to the places that need your activity, need you to join, need you to create to keep themselves alive. So uh, thank you very much for joining me on a video here. This has been Durham for Pastiche of Skin. As always, if you actually want to see more videos like this, um, you can always tell me. If you tell me more, you tell, I want to see more interesting things that are not directly related to gaming, but uh, tangentially related, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and you're always welcome to come and see them here on the channel. And of course, uh, if you want to find anything by me, it's underneath here. And if you want to find anything by Lee Tussman, make sure to check him up uh, online. You can start with getting links and email addresses and all those details from www.mess.life or you can of course give Lee Tussman a wee, uh, Google search and he will, obviously his work in digital art is actually available and easy to find online. So thank you very much for watching and I will see all you dudes in the next video. Bye.